Good afternoon, classmate. Good afternoon, Doc Melo. We are here to report about Chapter 5, the Emerging Technologies and Information Technology Infrastructure, together with Mr. Paul Firmala. And my topic is all about IT infrastructure. Then, a firm's entire business units or entire company may invest in hardware, software, and services, including consulting, training, and education as a part of IT infrastructure. The cornerstone of, for a company's ability to serve customers, collaborate with partners, and oversee internal operation is just IT infrastructure. Defining IT infrastructure. So there are nine ways to define IT infrastructure. So first is the computing platforms. This is used to provide computing services that integrate workers, clients, and suppliers into a cohesive digital ecosystem. Next is telecommunication services. This is serves as connect, connects workers, clients, and suppliers via date, voice, and video. <clears throat> The third one is data management services that handles and stores corporate data and offer tools for data analysis. The fourth one is application software services. So it includes the corporate features like enterprise resources, planning, source planning, customer relationship management, supply chain management, and knowledge management system that are shared by all company units. Next one is the physical facilities management services. This is to create and oversee the physical setups necessary for data management, telecommunications, and computer services. Next is the IT management services. So it includes the infrastructure planning and development units, coordination for IT services, accounting management, for IT expenditure and project management services. IT standard services gives the company and business units guidelines on how, when, and with which information technology will be employed. Number eight is IT education services. It includes to the training of staff on how to use a system, and for the managers, they will instruct on how to prepare and manage IT investments. And lastly, is the IT research and development that gives the business information on potential IT investment and projects that could help it stand out in the market. Next one is how the IT infrastructure evolve. So today's IT infrastructure in business is the result of more than 50 years of advancement in computer platforms. It has five stages, each one corresponding to a distinct arrangement of infrastructure and computing resources. So let's take a look back into the different era. So let's start with 1959 to present, or what we call the general purpose, mainframe, and mini computer era. So like what I've said, it starts with 1959 when the IBM released the IBM 1401 and 7090 transistorized machine. And the mainstream commercial use of mainframe computers started to that year. And the 360 of the first commercial computer to feature potent operating system capable of time sharing, multitasking, and virtual memory in more sophisticated variants. So since then, the IBM has been dominated the mainframe computing. So parang siya lang yung nakaano, siya yung may control o siya yung gumagawa pa ng mga ganun mga computer devices. Many online remote terminals are connected to the centralized mainframe utilizing proprietary data lines and communication protocols as a mainframe 
tutors grew in power. During the mainframe era, the majority of infrastructure was provided by a single vendor, the producer and the software, the producer of the software and hardware, under the supervision of experienced programmers and system operators. But on 1965, the debut, the debut of mini computers made by Digital Equipment Corporation or DEC is started to alter. Decentralized computing tailored to the unique needs of individual departments or business units rather than time sharing on a single enormous mainframe. It is made possible by DEC mini computers. And later, which provided powerful machines at much lower prices than IBM mainframes. The mini computer has developed into a mid-range computer or mid-range server in the recent years and it's now a component of a network. Let's next one is the personal computer era. It starts with 1981 up to present. <clears throat> So the IBM PC was the first to be widely adopted by the American businesses. Hence, its debut on 1981 is frequently seen as the beginning of the PC era. Initially using as DOS operating system, a text-based command language, and later transitioning to a Microsoft Windows operating system. The Intel PC operating system software OBA on a computer with an Intel CPU. This became an industry, industry standard desktop personal computer, personal computer. In the year 2012, there are about 300 million new PC shipped annually. And it's estimated that 90% of them uses some kinds of windows and 10% use the Mac Macintosh operating system. The dominance of Intel computing platform is waning as more people choose the iPhones and Android phones. New word, spreadsheets, electronic presentation software, and tiny data management were among the personal desktop productivity software tools that exploded in the rise of PCs in 1980s and gang sa 1990s. The tools were extremely beneficial to both home and businesses. But before the 1990s, PC operating system software is made feasible. Connect these PC to networks as they were standalone system. Next era is the client server era. It starts with 1983 up to present. So in client server computing, the desktop or laptop's computer, known as clients, are connected to a powerful server machine across a network and receive a variety of services and functionality from the servers. The, ser the client serves as the user's entry point, whereas the server frequently manage, manages the network, processes the shared data, and stores it, and serves up website. Servers refers to the both the first to both the network software itself and the real computer that runs it. Small businesses often use straightforward client server network. Pero sa mga large corporations mas implicate and multi-tired ang ginagamit nila o yung entire konto again. So client-server computing enables companies to spread out computer tasks among a number of affordable smaller workstations rather than a computer power and applications as a result. Microsoft currently dominates the industry with the Windows operating system. Yan yung ginagamit natin yung Windows. Yan, yung nagsimula yan sa Windows, Windows 7, Windows 98, Windows 99. Yung mga, yung mga OS na yun. So the next is the enterprise computing era. 
which starts in 1992 up to present. Early in the 1990s, businesses look to networking standard and software tools to unite various networks and applications across the company and the corporate infrastructure. Thus, up to 1995, <coughs> the transmission of the Adaptation of Transmission Control Protocol or Internet Protocol, what we call the TCPIP Networking Standard, to connect their dispersed network as the internet matured into a reliable communications environment. It includes public infrastructure like phone system, the internet, and public service, network services. Hmm. It can connect various types of computer hardware such as mainframes, servers, PC, and mobile device. Okay. So next era is the cloud and mobile computing era. This is from the year 2000 up to present again. So the client server, the cloud computing model is a result of internet's expanding bandwidth power. A computing model known as Cloud computing gives users online access to a shared pool of computing resources such as computers, storage, software, and services. Any link device on location can access these clouds, clouds or clouds of computing res resources as needed. Cloud computing is a type of computing that is currently expanding to the quickest. So, yung mga businesses ngayon uh, ay nag spend around 109 billion on public cloud services from 2012 and it will be projected to a 207 billion by the end of 2016. So, nangyari na siya. As a personal business computing progressively shift to mobile platforms, dozens and even hundreds of thousands of computers in our house in cloud data centers that may be accessed by desktop, laptop, tablet, entertainment center, smartphone, and client machines that connected to the internet. So, napaka-powerful niya itong ano to, itong era na to pala ngayon. Then, applications for softwares are sold as services that are offered to the internet software companies like Google, Microsoft, SAP, Oracle, and Salesforce.com. So we are now to the evolution evolution of IT infrastructure. Now let's go naman sa technology drivers of infrastructure evolution. So ano nung nga ba yung mga drivers na yan? No? Mga motivation factors po na yan. So first is the more slow and microprocessing power. In 1959, the first micro micro microprocessor chip was introduced. And Gordon Moore, who is the director for Fairchild Semiconductors Research and Development Laboratories, uh, according to him, an early producer of integrated circuits, the number of components on a chip with the lowest manufacturing cost per component has doubled annually. And that will be the and that's the basis of the Moore's, Moore's law. And later, Moore lowered the growth rate to a doubling every two years. Later, several interpretations of this law would be used. And next is the law of mass digital storage. So the law of mass digital storage is the second technological factor that is changing IT infrastructure. So every year, the amount of digital information nearly doubles. Fortunately, the price of digital data storage is decreasing at an exponential rate of 100% annually. So next is the Metcalfe's law and network economics. 
So we can better comprehend why computing resources are not easily accessible just thanks to the, uh, the first two laws that we have mentioned a while ago. And why? One question is, why do humans need more computational and storage capacity? Some solutions are offered by the economics of network and expansions of internet. Robert Metcalf, Metcalf, rather, the Internet Local Area Networks Creator, asserted in 1970 that a network's value or power increases exponentially with the increase in the number of network users. As more and more people join the network, Metcalfe and other, others highlight the rising returns to the scale that network members experience. The social and commercial benefits of digital networks, which quickly increase the number of actual and potential links among network members, have been a major drive of the demand for information technology. Next is the declining communication costs and the internet. Now, there's a significant decrease in communication costs and exponential increase in internet size are the four technology factors in reshaping the IT infrastructure. So there are currently 2.3 billion internet users around the world. So this data is around 2012. So malamang nas dumablo through yung plin natong bilang nato ngayon. Utilization of communication and computing facilities explodes and communication costs decline toward a very small number or close to zero. Businesses must considerably increase their internet access, including wireless connectivity, as well as computational capacity of their client server networks and desktop clients and mobile computing devices if they want to benefit from the commercial value associated with the internet. And lastly is the standards and network effects. So without agreements between manufacturers and widespread customer acceptance of technology standard, to this enterprise infrastructure, internet computing would not be possible, either now or in the future. So thanks to the technological standards that requires that determine a product's interoperability and a network capacity to interact. So in any form of computer will be significantly more expensive than it's right now without this economies of scale. So these are the some important standards in computing. So let's tackle it one by one. So first, the American Standard Code for Information Technology or the ASCII, -I, 1958. So that's a, what is the significance? So it made it possible per computer machine from different manufacturers to exchange data, later used as the universal language linking input and output devices, such as keyboard and mice computers, adapted by the American National Standard Institute in 1962. Next is the Common Business Oriented Language, or the COBOL, in 1959. So it is an easy-to-use software language that greatly expanded the ability of programmers to write business-related programs and reduce the cost of software. It is sponsored by Defense Department in 1959. Next one is the Unix, 1969 to 1975. This is a powerful multitasking, multi-user, Portable operating system initially developed at Bell Labs in 1969 and later released for use by others in 1975. It operates on a wide variety of computers from different manufacturers. Adapted by Sun, IBM, HP, and others in the 1980s, it became the most widely used enterprise-level operating system. 
Next one is the TCPIP or the Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol, 1974. That's a suit of communication protocols and a common addressing scheme that enables millions of computers to connect together in one giant global network, the internet. Later, it was used as a default networking protocol suit for local area networks and intranet. Developed in 1990, or early in 1970s for the U.S. Department of Defense. Next is the Ethernet, 1973. It's a network standard for connecting desktop computers into local area networks that enable the widespread adaptation of client-server computing and local area networks and further stimulate the adaptation of personal computers. Next is the IBM Microsoft Intel Personal Computer, 1981. So, kaya nasabi ko kanina, ba? The standard mental design for personal computer based on standard Intel processors and other standard devices. Microsoft DOS and later Windows software. And, that, and this emergence of this standard low-cost product in the foundation of a 25-year-old explosive growth in compounding throughout all organizations around the world. So today, there are one, more than 1 billion PCs powered by business and government activities every day. And ito yung mas, mas familiar sa atin ito, diba? Yung WWW or the World Wide Web. 1989 to 1993. Standards for storing, retrieving, formatting, and displaying information as a World Wide Web of electronic pages incorporating text, graphics, audio, video enables creation of a global repository of billions of web pages. So that's all about my report about IT infrastructure. And now we will call on now for our next reporter. Thank you very much.